Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I have a topic to discuss that I've been putting off. Please excuse me. It has to do with the likelihood of a Carrington effect um, and the consequences, the short-term consequences um, resulting from that due to the fact that here in the United States we are very um, technologically oriented and uh, electronics oriented. I'd like to put forth the notion that a Carrington effect, in addition to um, the damage that it might do to the power grids uh, here in the United States and elsewhere in the world, um, might also halt transportation here in the United States and elsewhere in the world because of the electronics uh, in cars now, in the engines and in the systems of cars. My question is, would, um, would a Carrington effect most likely uh, destroy sensitive uh, uh, mechanisms, electronic mechanisms in cars, making it no longer possible for transportation to take place? All right. So, so this is a call to action regarding mitigation of that possibility. Um, what can we do to prepare ourselves for uh, lack of transportation for, say, a week or two weeks or maybe an extended length of time? Um, for instance, uh, with lack of transportation, um, one of the things that might happen is that people who are homebound and on oxygen would be no longer able to obtain oxygen. They need to talk over this possibility with their health care providers and try and supply additional, keep on hand, additional emergency containers of oxygen. I know this is possible because, for instance, in snowbound areas, um, Medicare will provide those kinds of containers, large containers full of oxygen in case the electricity goes down. Uh, I'd like to suggest that all people who are on oxygen have those containers on hand because of the likelihood of, their, of the Carrington effect affecting transportation for some length of time. Um, if you are able, if you have the money, or if you're thinking of trading to a new car, may I suggest the type of car that has no electronics in it? You know, that uh, very basic car. I think that's a very good plan for the future. In addition, in terms of water supply, my understanding is that there's a like a power a power um, house that pushes the water from you know the storage area to the various homes somehow. I don't know how this takes place, but if that's true, and if the power goes out because of the Carrington effect, then we will have no water. So everyone has to look into alternatives of water supply in the event of a Carrington effect. Um, of course, there's an issue of food and of cooking the food. I suggest keeping small cans of food on, on hand that are already hydrated, that don't need extra water, and that have protein content in them. This is because if the Carrington effect takes place, then there will be no, um, there will be no refrigerators to keep the food uh, in, in large containers on hand and, and it will spoil. So individual or family size servings of canned foods are the best bet. Say beans, maybe rice, um, maybe oats. Maybe oats that are quick oats would be a possibility uh, if a, a fire source can be provided. All this I've written up in, in the, the um, blog that has in its title the word Pioneer. So you can look up there too. Uh, if we were suddenly reduced to pioneering circumstances, then you would want to have on hand in your house at least the least expensive ways of sustaining life until the power grids and transportation are restored. Also, as a result of possible transportation takedown, uh, if the strike of the Carrington effect were to take place, say, midday, there would be an issue of families reunited so that they'll be better capable of surviving 
during the interval before power is restored. Um, how will parents get home if their job takes them far from their home? How will children get home from school? Is there a plan in place to help with that? Suppose they can't get home. Then is there a plan for survival at the place where the parents work? Is there a plan for survival at the school where the children are? If part of the family are, arrives home, say the children and the parents cannot, then do the children know what to do in order to protect themselves and sustain themselves until a family is reunited? Okay, here's something else. Could each community provide something along the lines of the Babylonian granary or granary where, or, or in Jewish times where people would, the, the person in charge of a group of people would have a grain store just in case of times of difficulty such as the Carrington effect would cause. Um, would there be a place, a local place, say a deserted supermarket, where supplies could be kept and doled out in the way that rations were doled out during World War II? This is something that each community could uh, decide upon and provide for on its own. Milk for mothers, for instance, with young children. Um, powdered milk, say. And um, maybe grain stores uh, that say um, cornmeal, flour, um, and the other things that I've suggested, such as rice and beans, could be on hand and could be given out in the way that these supplies are given out in thir third world countries during um, catastrophic natural disasters. So, so we need to look to the home front right now, I feel. It would be good to draw back our troops in, in an organized way as conflicts begin to cease worldwide and instead develop a plan on the home front for caring for our own communities during times of crisis maybe extended times of crisis, the Carrington effect being only one such. That's my thought for today. I wish you all the very best.